very quick video just to show you how to make um, control cables. Quite a simple, simple procedure. Show you what parts to use and what special techniques you need to use to get them to be strong enough. This is the magic fluid. This is basically called Baker's fluid number three. You can make it up yourself. I make it myself using zinc chloride crystals, which you can buy online. And then you just mix about a half a litre of water to two teaspoons full of zinc chloride. And that's your Baker's fluid made up. Or you can just buy it from a plumber's shop, but you, sometimes you have to order it specially because they don't keep it anymore. But it's basically to allow the solder to take to the steel cable. It's going to be a tough one to do with one hand. So what you basically do is get your soldering iron. I, I also use this, if you're doing a lot of cables, if you make it up more than one cable in one hit, then what I tend to do is this. Just get yourself a, a pot, like I've done here. And you can either fill that full of lead from lead sticks, or you can use lead from old tire weights, or you can use a roll of solder. But fill up a something made of you know something made of steel that is good and strong that you can you can catch hold of that you know the handle's not going to break off and cover you in molten solder. And then you can heat that up just over a camping gas stove. I use a hot plate, but I'm not a You just leave it on there long enough until it melts. And then what you do is dip your cables and the nipples into the baker's fluid and then put the nipple on put the nipple on the cable and then what you always do when you're making a cable when you're trying to put a nipple on the end of a cable is you always fray up the end of the cable try and sort of twist it up into as big a ball as you can and jam that into the hole because that allows it to tin better and prevents it from pulling through and out of the nipple. All right, so I'm going to film this <laughs> holding the camera in my mouth so you won't, I won't be able to narrate it. I'll have to add the narration later. First thing to do is make sure your soldering iron is good and clean. I always clean mine on the um, daisy wheel before I start. Then tin it, which is simply a process of dip your solder in the in the baker's fluid and tin the end of your solder line. Now I've previously applied some, uh, baker's fluid to this nipple so I can now just put some solder into it. I'm keeping the nipple upside down so that I can actually feed the, feed the solder into the uh, dimple and there you can see I'm pouring some baker's fluid onto it because that completely cleans it and makes it makes the steel of the cable ready to it's like the baker's fluid is like flux but it's not flux it actually it's it's zinc chloride and it allows the steel to accept solder because obviously steel won't generally accept solder what i'm going to do now is just turn the nipple up the other way so that I can, so I can actually pull it, so I can actually get the uh, the solder to pull. So you basically apply the heat again to the nipple. But always make sure you keep it, keep some solder, you know, keep your solder and iron tinned, otherwise it won't accept it. But get some heat on it, and then take the iron away. And then you can still you can dab some further solder into the joint because the, the nipple will stay hot for quite some time. See, I'm 
we're now dabbing it in just to close the hole so there's no hole in the end of it. And you basically keep going until the solder's almost starting to cool and starting to solidify. And then you stop. turn it up the other way just cleaning my cleaning my forceps there before I go any further solder's a little bit lumpy so I think I'll just heat it up one more time to just let it flow a little bit better so it flows back down towards the dimple because you can see that I'm just shaking a little bit of uh, solder out there but you can see that the solder has come right the way through so now I just basically want to fill the dimple make sure that it's nice and round so there's a little bit of slag on the end of there or like bubbly fat on it I just want to scrape that off and see that it's clean underneath. And I think that's pretty good to go. It wants a little bit of a file off. But generally speaking, I think that's pretty good to go. You've got to ensure that you don't get too much build-up of solder around the edge of the nipple, otherwise the nipple won't turn properly in the barrel. That's looking reasonably good. I think that just needs a little bit of a clean-up with a file. So now I'm going to cut the end off this original cable. It just makes it a lot more accurate to measure if I take the inner cable out first. So what I'm going to do now is compare this old cable, the original cable, to my new cable, which I haven't yet cut. I haven't yet cut to length. Now I had a little bit on the end for the nipple and for the little knot that you're going to put. Well, it's not actually a knot, but it's just a bird up end that you're going to put to fit into the dimple. So there we go, I've cut the cable to the length I want, the inner cable. Compared the two and it's pretty good. I'm spuddling about, I don't know what I'm doing. completely lose my, tra lose my train of thought, I don't know what I'm doing, but uh, yeah, just getting a, the correct nipple for the other end. It's always useful to buy a box, I mean you can get them on um, Auto Jumbles, you get them at, at Auto Jumbles, or you can buy online, buy yourself a, a load, a load, a load of different nipples and different size cable as well. This That cable I'm using at the moment is what they call double zero. But I think it goes up to two, which is brake and handbrake cable. On the trikes I use a, a, an even wider cable, which I buy specially, which is 2.5 mil thick cable. But generally speaking on motorbikes, you'll use double zero, zero, one and two. Throttle cable and these little cables are about the size of a gear cable on a on a bicycle, which you can also use as an alternative if you need to. This is where I get 
get a bit confused and forget which end I took the cable out of. So what you want to do now is get your new cable and lay it up against the old one. What you're looking to do is duplicate the exact length of the old cable. So I've put the two nipples together and then slide it all the way along the cable and cut your new cable. It's difficult to do with one hand, but cut your new cable just a little bit longer than your old nipple, just enough to give it something to pull into the nipple. So you don't want it any longer and you don't want it any shorter. So you want pretty much from the old from the new nipple that you've just put on carefully measure it right the way through to the existing old nipple there in fact it's probably better to cut the old one because it's easier to measure so I'm going to do that What I'm doing now is cutting the outer cable and the way to do that is the outer cable is a spiral cable so it's a, it's a spiral wrap cable and it's wrapped in plastic so what you need to do is you need to get the cable cutters and these are special cable cutters for Bowden cable and what you have to do is you have to get the blades one blade has to go in the spiral at the front and then the second blade has to go in the spiral at the back you have to work it in and then cut it otherwise you'll end up flattening the spiral cable What I'm doing here is fitting a second ferrule just to take up the slack in the adjuster because it's a double zero outer and the ferrule is a, uh, I'm fitting a zero to it just to take up the slack in the adjuster. That's better. So you just need to fit a ferrule to the other end now. Just 
slide that onto the inner cable. And give it a little crimp with the cutting crimping tool. It's not really a crimping tool, but it works, it works well at doing it. And then you put the last nipple on. Spur up the other end. Pretty good. I'm just taking it down a little bit so that it fits a little bit better in the guide roller. build up a solder on this so I just need to file it down a little bit so that it will run properly in the guide. Nothing much but it's just it's got to be smooth and round so that when you grease it it, it can roll round in the guide.
that's the cable I made earlier in position it's the decompressor lever which is solenoid operated on this trike and you can see the new brass fitting that I put on the end of it and I also put a piece of um, heat shrink on and shrunk it down just to make sure the ferrule can't pull out because that's one of the major bugbears with these cables is the ferrules pulling out and there's the other end of it you can see the brass nipple I soldered on the end of it and that's ready to do its job so that's a fairly simple procedure to make a new cable but what a lot of people forget to do when they solder the nipples on is they forget to bunch up the cable in the end there's a dimple in the in one end of the nipple and that dimple is not to help you get the cable on which a lot of people think it is the dimple is actually to so that you can squash the end of the cable up and bunch it up and then once that's soldered it makes it far more difficult for that to pull through I'll show you on a cable nipple I use a big one as I know you all but like big nipples and that's basically shows you the wide end and that shows you the narrow end and a lot of people tend to think that that is some sort of a guide for putting the cable in it's not you put the cable Put the cable in like so and then you crunch up the end of the cable with one this big you can you could even double it up crunch it up a couple of times and then pull it into that dimple and then solder it in so that's pretty much it that's really all there is to it you need obviously a comprehensive selection of nipples or ferrules different sizes of cable this is double zero all different all different bits and bobs that's for handlebars for handlebar adjusters but you need that to start with because you generally cannot reuse the, the cast nipples you've got to change to brass ones okay if you enjoyed this video do me a favor don't smash the like button take it out for a nice meal wine it and dine it and then don't expect to sleep with it on the first night